Hello, hello. In today's video, I'm talking about the aversion to strategy and having a methodology or a system around love and relationships, which I definitely get. I get that a lot. I, I hear that a lot, um, especially from people who consider themselves to be hopeless romantics, people who are quite spiritual, like to kind of go with the flow, like to surrender and trust the process and kind of be very much in that heart centric space and kind of be very um, heart centered. And so inevitably bringing in, you know, a system, a methodology, being rational and, and talking about love and relationships in a kind of science driven way can feel quite jarring. It can feel very unnatural. And I can really understand this. When we think about matters of the heart, they are typically shrouded in very soft language, right? Like love and relationships and the heart, it's all seen as kind of very like enigmatic, mysterious, deep spiritual experiences. And the heart is something that, you know, we don't really understand. And it's something very kind of mythic and magical and you know, we can be very rational and logical with every area of our lives. But when it comes to the heart, we're like, no, 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 we're going to let the soft, beautiful, enigmatic part of me lead. And I'm going to trust my heart. I'm going to go with my heart. And these are all really lovely sentiments. They're really lovely ideas. I can certainly relate to them, especially kind of being someone who's grown up, always being very interested in love and being a bit of a romantic. I think that's actually one of the first not first, but one of the few things that my um, husband pointed out, I mean, like very early on, even when we first met and he, you know, he was like, you're a hopeless romantic, aren't you? And I was like, am I? I don't think so. <laughs> like, I'm pretty like rational and shrewd, but I still am ultimately. I still am to the extent that I love love. I mean, I work in the field of love. I've my favorite texts and literature and everything that I've ever adored has always been about love. Uh, my favorite Raymond Carver story here at my thesis on is what we talk about when we talk about love. I've always been interested in love. So I get it. It's this really wonderful, nourishing, kind of soft, mysterious part of ourselves and of our lives. That being said, when we think about dating and relationships in the modern day and, you know, in historical day too, we need the head to be integrated with the heart. And the reason for that is that because the heart is so widely misunderstood, often when we think we are being led by the heart or we are following our heart, it's not actually our heart that we're listening to. What's actually going on is a whole flurry, a whole cocktail of unhealthy attachment, unprocessed childhood wounds, maladaptive human uh, adult behaviors, just all of these kind of beliefs and values and, and ways of thinking that we've adopted and inherited from society, from culture, from our parents, that aren't necessarily what we actually want to be believing. A lot of it's just very on autopilot. And so there's a reason why your love and your relationships and that whole realm in your life can feel a little bit confusing, a little bit misunderstood. And it's because of this, because it is so unexamined, typically, People don't spend enough time looking at the matters of the relationships. And so they don't get to dig around in there with their magnifying glass, with their you know little scientist hat on, being rational and logical and looking at it and thinking, is this actually me? Or is this actually an inherited belief from my grandmother? Is this actually me? Or is this actually just an old childhood wound from something my father did to me when I was two years old? And so because we haven't examined our heart, because it's not really culturally, societally a thing that we do, we just let our hearts run the show. They, they off they go. They're not a healthy, integrated, fully functional version of ourselves often. And so they lead us astray. They can lead us to making bad decisions, being attracted to the wrong type of person for us, ending up in relationships that aren't healthy for us, settling for crumbs, being in abusive relationships. For example, 
really common one is, let's say my heart tells me that I'm into a certain type of person and I know that I'm really into this type of person, I have a type and this type is exactly what my heart wants. And I know that when I'm around them, my heart flutters, I feel so joyful and it's kind of this almost addictive feeling of like, oh, I need more of them and I can't wait to see them and I want to be in a relationship with them and I want to marry them and blah, 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 blah. That's not necessarily your heart actually speaking there, right? What's probably going on there is going to be, again, that cocktail of maladaptive human responses based on your childhood conditioning, your wounds, your core needs not getting met, whatever it might be specifically for you. But it's very likely not your authentic heart. Your authentic heart's lying beneath all of that. And you might not even be able to really feel it because it's buried so deep beneath all of these layers. And so to that end, that attraction, that desire for that type is very likely going to be based on an unhealthy attachment, on an unhealthy attraction, on a a painful type of attraction that might feel amazing in the moment, might feel wonderful, might feel exciting and exhilarating. But then once you're actually in that relationship or you're pursuing them further, the heartbreak starts to set in because actually they were never the right person for your heart. And so you were just getting confused because all of the stuff was going on that you weren't aware of because frankly, no one's really aware of it, right? People aren't looking at the stuff. And so they're just kind of going in blindly, trusting their heart, not realizing it's actually not their heart that they've been listening to in the first place. So to that end, we need to integrate the head. We need to integrate our logic, our reason, our rational selves, our adult selves. And we don't want to go to the flip side either. We don't want to be entirely in the head and operate entirely from there because that's going to lead us astray in a different way, right? You want to have a balance. You want to have a balance of head and heart. And so the way that that looks like is bringing in a bit of a a boundary really around your love and relationships and what that boundary might look like is having a bit of a structure and a system it might look like okay like I've got a client right now for example he has said that he's going to take a couple months out of dating that's his boundary to focus on clearing out with me what is blocking him from actually connecting with his true heart because he's noticing that There are patterns of attraction unfolding that aren't actually in his service. They're actually not working out for him. They're actually hurting him long-term. And so something's awry, right? And so he's integrating his head and his reason and his intellect. And he's creating a a boundary and a container to work on this, to clear this out so that he can then get back in the game with head and heart beautifully integrated and be able to actually make healthy, discerning, adult decisions that are in his best interest rather than letting himself be led and dragged away by this kind of unprocessed, often very childlike part of ourselves. So what would it look like if you were to bring your fully functional, adaptive adult to your relationships? You probably would be more discerning. You probably would slow down. You probably would bring more logic and reason into the equation. You probably would be looking at like what's genuinely going on for you. And you probably would be questioning the different messages, beliefs, values, ways of being, things that you're ever even interested in because they might not actually be who you are authentically at your core, right? And so to that end, structure, methodology, and a system are one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself in your dating and your relationships because they allow you to actually relax more. When you know that you've brought in your head and you've brought in your rational and your reason and your intellect to support you in matters of the heart, to support you in going deep into your vulnerability and seeing what's really going on there, to support you in making connections with others, it really keeps you safe. It gives you that lovely structure. And again, that boundary, I think of it as a boundary, within which you can play, within which you can explore and adventure and have connections and meet people and get to know people and get to know yourself. When you don't have that structure, when you don't have the head integrated, when you don't have a system through which you're following and some kind of logic and reason behind it, 
which can, can be comprised of your values of how you want to do things, then it can be complete chaos. Because again, you're just letting essentially, you know, an unprocessed maladaptive child run the show. We don't want to be doing that. Not if you're serious about actually finding healthy, long lasting, good, nourishing relationships. If you want to just mess around, absolutely go nuts. But I don't think if you've watched this far, I don't think you're into that. So if having a structure and a bit of a system sounds good to you and you can appreciate how you can relax more and then actually go and focus on other areas of your life too, because we don't want love and relationships to take up your entire focus, right? That's the other thing that happens. If you don't have your love and relationships kind of contained, then it can bleed into every aspect. And whilst that can be wonderful, I can understand if you're building a business, if you're gunning for a promotion, if you're trying to figure out other areas of your life out, you want to have some container around it, right? So that all makes sense. So if having a structure and a system sounds appealing to you, I'll be walking you through my own structure and system, my 12 stage methodology, which is all geared to helping you get really, 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 really clear on what's going on for you. Who are you? What's going on in your heart? What do you need to clear? What do you need to discern? What other boundaries do you need to create? And what do you need to be attracting in your life and in your relationships, in your in your life partner, to be happy and to have that ultra meaningful, wonderful, nourishing, safe, happy, adventurous relationship that you're seeking, right? So this 12 stage methodology comprised of three phases, liberation, behavioral science and integrity that I've been, been building for a while now and been working with clients and getting incredible results. I'll be walking you through the whole process and um, it is science-based, it is pretty systematic, it is logical and rational, and damn right it is, because it allows you to play and go deeper into the softer parts of you and to explore your relationships with this healthy structure so that you actually know what you're doing and you actually know you can trust yourself and you have a foundation. You're not just flailing around in the dark trying to figure it out. So if that sounds good to you, just DM me and I'll give you the link to sign up to a masterclass. Would love to have you there. And um, I hope to see you next week.